March 18, 1965, at the height of the Cold War, the Soviets launched cosmonauts Pavel Belyayev and Alexei Leonov on a mission that would see the first man exit a spacecraft, adding to their already impressive list of space records. The main objective was to uh, come out into uh, outer space, and in this connection there was the task to test the airlock system, to test the space suit, and generally speaking to uh, find out how man would uh, act and react in outer space to overstep the psychological barrier, which uh, we had no uh, knowledge of, uh, thank goodness, and this we did, and now I can say uh, with assurance that um, it is possible to live and to work in outer space. On the second orbit, Leonov prepared to leave the craft. He entered the extended airlock, which protruded from the Vostok capsule by about five feet. Squeezing himself through the three-foot-wide tunnel, Leonov opened a hatch at the end and eased his way out of the airlock to swim in space at the end of a 15-foot-long tether. Beneath him, the Earth revolved as another milestone in space exploration was achieved. After a few seconds floating freely, Leonov maneuvered himself back to the craft, hitching himself to its exterior. Leonov did more than just frolic in space, turning somersaults at a rate of 10 revolutions a minute. He proved that a man could work outside his craft in space and survive, given the protection of a spacesuit and a life support backpack. The intense cold of shadow, the heat of the sun, radiation, and micrometeorites were all expected to present severe problems. Leonov's exploit gave the green light for useful work in space and ultimately walking on the moon. Leonov performed his spacewalk flawlessly, but encountered severe trouble upon attempting to re-enter the capsule. Unfortunately, the effects of outer space and weightlessness had not been taken into account in the design of a spacesuit, which ballooned out and made his return back into the spacecraft nearly impossible. After his 10-minute excursion, Leonov struggled for eight minutes to squeeze back into the airlock. Back inside the spacecraft, the airlock was jettisoned and Voskhod 2 continued for 16 more orbits. As the crew members prepared for the automatic firing of the retro rockets, the sensor in the attitude control system failed and the automatic procedure had to be halted. In order for Belyayev to perform the orientation maneuvers manually and fire up the retros, the Voskhod 2 had to fly for one additional orbit. Trained to deal with problems such as this, the duo remained calm as the craft once again circled the Earth. They were not out of danger yet, however. The celebrations would have to wait. the extra orbit, Voskhod 2 landed nearly 600 miles off target in deep snow. A damaged telemetry antenna made it impossible for rescue teams to locate the craft, and it took a helicopter two and a half hours to find the crew. Back on Earth, the cosmonauts waited patiently, following orders and remaining in the craft. The terrain made a helicopter pickup impossible. So Belyayev and Leonov spent the night in their spacecraft, hiding from wolves before being reached by ground vehicles. Only then was an announcement about the end of the mission made, washing rumors in the West about a disaster. Leonov and the Soviet space program narrowly escaped a tragic and embarrassing incident. Despite the difficulties, Leonov's successful spacewalk put to rest all fears about working in space and whether men could walk on the moon. His flight, however, marked the end of the Soviet Union's overpowering dominance in space.